How do you go from that beginning to where you are today? I think the best thing that happened was when I moved to London because I, my English got better. I started working a lot for ASUS and that made me learn more about poses and like my angles. And because they were really big at the time, I started getting other clients here in America. You said something about the posing. So yes, for the model, you were not born with the poses, right? So mm -hmm. like, do you have to work on it? Like, what are some of the things that you did to get there? I think because I was always working with a model at the studio with me, I would always watch all the girls and everyone just poses differently. So I was like, oh, that, so that's how they do it. Like everyone does like super fast, different poses. And I was like, oh, okay. So then with time I started getting my own poses, but inspired by those girls that I saw, you know, working with me. Did you move to London at that time? I did. I was about six months in Miami. Then I went for a couple months in LA because I, I just wanted to go to a different city and take probably different photos because Miami photos are super commercial. Then I moved to London. I was there for probably like six, seven months. And then I did Miami, LA again. And then after that, I moved to New York. So you signed with IMG. Mm -hmm. How was that? For me, it was funny because like when I was finally ready to sign with an agency that like I got money in my pocket to like pay for my own apartments and all stuff. I decided to come to New York and meet the agencies because I wanted to choose the agency that I liked the most. So I saw a couple of agencies, most of them were like super mean to me and they were like telling me like, oh, we are going to do this for you. I was like, well, that's not how it works. Like I want to be able to choose what I want for myself. I was almost signing with Next and then my mother agent called me saying like, hey, so IMG just emailed me and they said that they want to see you. Oh, how did, how did that happen? And he's like, the, uh, this guy said that he messaged you on Instagram. And I was like, oh my gosh, because that was this guy I remember, which is my booker today. <laughs> he was like, hey, do you have an agency in New York and Paris? And I was like, no, but you can talk to my mother agent about it. So I sent his email. So he emailed them and they they got me a flight to go to New York and I just came here and saw them because my booker is Brazilian, like I got really attached to him right away and I decided to sign with IMG. So then once you signed with IMG, mm -hmm. uh, is that when you moved to New York? I probably moved uh, one month later, but for me, I really didn't like New York for like two years. I hate it. Why? It was just a bad experience all the time. Like everything was super expensive. Like I didn't like the places I was living in and I didn't have any friends. I feel like I got really depressed on the first year because I didn't know anyone. I was traveling a lot and it was just really hard. So even though you were with one of the best agencies in New York, you were working all the time, traveling the world, it was still hard because it was really hard because I felt really lonely. I was always by myself. I didn't have any friends to go out with and I, they, I was just always by myself. When I was not working, I was just by myself on my phone. And basically when my friend moved to New York, I feel like that's when everything started getting better because I would have her and she would have me and then we would just like be doing everything together. So when you were in Brazil, you know, modeling there for, for your uncle, Mm -hmm. Did you have any dreams to be in like a magazine? I think that I always wanted to be on a L or Vogue cover. So when I actually got the, my first L cover uh, for Brazil, that was like amazing to me. I, I couldn't believe, like I wish I was in Brazil to take a photo of every magazine stand that I saw. Like even though I already got other covers before, that for me was special because it was from my country, you know. It was something that I always dreamed of, like of everyone, like my family and friends, like seeing me in the magazine cover there, you know. And how was the dream compared to the reality? When you dream about something, you cannot, you cannot explain it when, you act, when it actually happens. Because it's like, I don't know, it's a different type of happiness. <laughs> Let's say we were creating the movie of your life, right? 
from the time you were born to now. What would be like the best moment in this in the movie? I th <laughs> um, I think that for sure when I got the VS show. That was I don't even know how to explain how I felt. Because it's just so hard to get there that when you get you just So if let's say I don't know much of fashion and I don't know much of model photograph and photography, explain to me why why is it so hard and why is it so important? <laughs> well, it's hard because all the girls all over the world come to New York to do that casting and there's so many beautiful girls and it's not even about being pretty or having just a good body it's about being your time and you working hard for it and they see in it it was my third time trying and after so many mistakes you know because every year is a different mistake you make so for me the, the year I got, which was last year, was the year that I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna be myself and stop being nervous because that's not gonna take me anywhere. So when I got there, I just, just decided to be myself. And that's how I got it. You can do any fashion show in your life, people would not notice you there. But when you do the VS show, you are a Victoria's Secret model. The whole world knows what Victoria's Secret is. So if you say like, oh, I walked for VS, they're like, Oh my gosh. And people actually see you differently after you get. Yeah, it was quite a show. <laughs> it was quite a show. There was an episode at the show that, that involved you. Um, you were walking and the model that was in front of you, what's her name? Ming. Ming. She, she, for some reasons, she, she fell. Um, Tell me, what was going through your mind when that happened? It was the first time ever that a model fell on a Victoria's Secret fashion show. So it's not like you plan to do anything. It just happened. So I decided to just walk and like help her because she was really having a hard time because she had the wings and the wings are heavy. She had the long dress. So I just went ahead and helped her. And I was like, go. Like she didn't even know what to do. I was like, just go. Go, go, live your moment. I see that you, you have a lot of followers on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And it's nice that you engage with your followers too. Like, you, you, like you're talking about bullying. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you do a live, you answer questions. Like, I feel like it's important to talk to people because you follow someone and then you think like, why am I following this person again? So for me to go ahead and like say like, hey, people are bullying me before. Like my life is not perfect. Like, I'm not like a rich girl that was born rich or like something like that or, or like I didn't, I, I worked hard to be where I am today and I want people to always remember that. Tell me a little bit about your routine today, like what does a week look like to you? Usually I, when I'm not working I try to always do something, either like taking photos for Instagram or meeting my friends like eating somewhere new, like trying new things. And now that the weather is better, uh, I just like to go and enjoy the, the day and working out and stuff like that. If I'm like working for a magazine or something and I know, for example, it's gonna be something fashionable, I love like looking at photos of like fashion editorials that I like, so I get inspired. But every time you go to a job, they have a mood board and they show you a little bit of what they want, so it's nice to like study. <laughs> cool. What's the one thing that you would like your fans to know that they may not know about you? I feel like I'm still really shy. People just don't realize it because I like, try to hide it a lot. But for example, when someone stopped me on the street and they say like, hey, I follow you on Instagram, I get super shy. Like, I don't know how to act. I don't know what to do. Like sometimes people just want to hug or, or take a photo and they're like super shy to stop me. And I, 
I just like freeze. I don't know what to do. I'm just like, eh. <laughs> like I don't know. I, f I feel like that's something that people just don't know because they see someone with a lot of followers and like traveling all around the world and knowing like everyone, and they don't realize that they are also like they also have insecurities. A lot of your followers, I imagine, they they are girls just like you were when you were 12, 13, 15, 18, trying to live in this beautiful world of a model. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to those girls? I think to never listen to bad comments about themselves. You know, people always want to put you down when you have a dream. And it doesn't matter what dream it is, but people always want to put you down and say like, ah, no, that's not going to work. Or I don't think you're good enough for that. And when you want something, nobody can stop you. Like nobody could stop me. People told me so many things that like, I don't even want to remember, but I was always like, I don't want to hear that. I want to hear that I, I will do it. So I think it's really important to not listen to anyone and just follow your dream. It's so cheesy to say follow your dream, but it is true. Like if you, if you work hard and follow your dream without listening to people that put you down, then you are going to get where you want to be. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Much.